Hello everybody, welcome. Just in time for our next pin video. Come on in, let's go. Hello everybody, Larry here and welcome back to Larry's Fountain Pen. Today is a very special day for me because uh, I've been waiting for a very special pen to arrive. Not from this country, from Russia. That's right, you heard me, Russia. And they came in this package today. I just covered up my address, but as you can see up here it says Moscow right okay so I'm really excited to uh, get to see these fountain pens but before I show you the fountain pens I'm going to tell you a little bit about it now this uh, review is going to be a little bit lengthy so I want to warm me up front in maybe 30 40 minutes so uh, tell your friends get your family around the TV set computers whatever you have and grab some popcorn your favorite drink and just relax kick back and listen and watch this review because this I'll tell you it's going to be a very interesting pen review I know for me it will be <clears throat> a little bit about the pens first let me open this package. And I'll have my buddy, Mr. Announcer, to help me in a few minutes. So, and the reason why I have him help me with their speaking part of it, because my voice, when I got sick, it uh, affected my vocal cords. So, that's why he does what he does for me. Alright, here's the bag. I've torn it open. And they come in these pin boxes nice cardboard black boxes with the new if that's how you spell it, say it B E N U Russian made fountain pens I'm really excited I haven't seen them yet I haven't opened the box we'll do this together so he's going to read about these pens and going to give you some data some information about the pins, where, how they made, and it's different. So here we go. Let's start the review, Mr. Announcer. Benu, a Moscow-based producer of conceptual handmade writing instruments, introduces the newest limited edition series of handmade and hand-painted fountain pens, rollerball pens, and ballpoint pens. Aiming squarely at discerning customers looking for something a little more exclusive, Bainu refines all its existing collections with a new high-grade models. Each sublime model is limited to only 100 pieces and supplied with a signed certificate of authenticity. The creation of the sublime pens takes three to six days depending on the model. Each pen has several layers of painting and lacquer to ensure the depth of colors and glossiness of a surface. The process consists of the following several steps. At first stage, a pen's body is made by hand, which takes up to eight hours. After the body is ready, a painter applies lacquer, mineral pigments, and foil using different brushes, sponges, and other instruments. Then the body is left to dry for 24 hours. The process is repeated to create a new layer of painting and lacquer. Afterwards, the body is left to dry again for another 24 hours. The body undergoes the painting process several times. Depending on models, a pen has three to five layers. After all the layers have been properly dried, 
the body of the pen is covered with a final layer of lacquer. The final layer of lacquer also requires 24 hours to dry. Then a master sands and polishes the body, making it ready for assembling. As a result of hand painting, each and every Sublime pen is truly unique and has its own original look that can never be repeated. All right, there you have it. The uh, the pens uh, are were introduced in a limited edition, May twenty eighth. That's when they finally came out to be ready for all of us to view, and they sound like some pretty amazing pens. Again, Moscow-based creative workshop, and they're they're not like just off an assembly line. They all, you know, here comes one, then the others exact. They're the same. They're none of them are exactly alike. They're all different, all unique. As you heard, Mr. Announcer, reading, it takes quite a bit of time in the process to put these pins together, and you get a letter of authenticity. That's a good thing. We'll talk about price closer to the end. So, these fountain pens. Uh, the uh, they're made all are made in house, all except for the nibs. They're Jovo nibs, Bach nibs, and they come uh, with fine, medium, and broad nibs. Uh, the only thing that's not in house is uh, the the roller balls, the ballpoint pen refills. These pens are pocket-sized pens. They they don't even have a pocket clip. Real quick, cigar-shaped fountain pens, pocket fountain pens. They are not postable, so if that was you, do not try to cap them. Uh, translucent, very nice looking. The uh, cartridges are short international cartridges and just refill them if you want with your favorite ink. And also, for all you eyedroppers out there, bang! Here you go. This can be made into an eyedropper. Don't forget to use your silicone grease. Get it all ready and go with the flow. The next pen that was supposed to be coming she couldn't send because she's still waiting for other nibs and materials from Germany to get processed through the channels from Russia. So she was telling me that the uh, inspection is a part of deal there when anything going in or out. So that's a hold up. So she thought she'd just send me these two right now and I can show everybody. And she sent me a fine and broad nib with a medium nib that unscrews and screws in so we can get to see all of the variations of nibs that this fountain pen offers. So be ready uh, for the pen. So what do you say let's get to the pen and then we'll do some measurements at the end and then we'll uh, do some uh, writing. So I'm excited as, as y'all. So. Uh, Let's go with the uh, first box, uh, and number 10. In the back, there'll be, we'll have the, mo the name, the model number, and reference number. So here we go. I'm just as excited as you are. I've been waiting for these. Here we go. inside of the box. It has the name of the pen maker company, the new. And here is the certificate of authenticity. Is this not awesome? Mr. Announcer, will you do the honors? Certificate of authenticity. This handmade and hand-painted fountain pen was produced in a limited quantity of 100 pieces worldwide. 
This certifies that the pin contained in this case is number 23 of 100 pieces produced. There you have it. Let you get a look at that. Over here on the bottom corner. Okay. And uh, I'll let you read the co-founder in the bottom parts. Give the names. Uh, co-founder and managing director is Kate Dimitrieva. Co-founder and creative director, Alex Samang. So, thank you to Kate and Alex. It is an honor and a privilege for me to be able to review these fountain pens. So, without further ado, let's open the first one up. Comes in like a little shredded, uh, same color of the uh, paper. A nice bed, shredded bed of uh, paper. And it comes wrapped up, as you see here, in a knot. So we're going to undo it. And I untied it. And here we go. I've been trying to see these. Now, I have seen the pictures of them, but in person, not yet. The unveiling. And the drum roll. Here we go. Set these aside. Look at this beautiful, gorgeous fountain pen. Seeing is believing, my friends. This is just, I'm speechless. Look at this beautiful colors. Handmade. Each pen is handmade in house, painted. It takes a process to do each and every one of these fountain pens. A lot of work and detail has been put in each fountain pen. And you can tell it just by looking at it. Look at that. Your pen has been produced from non-toxic, high-quality resin. Before being dispatched from our workshop, it underwent a series of technical, mechanical, and visual inspections to verify its accuracy, durability, and overall appearance. We only allow pens that meet the highest quality requirements to be shipped to our customers. The right care of your pen will preserve its beauty. Product care. Avoid strong shocks. Your writing instrument is handcrafted of precious resin. Though this material is highly durable, it can break if dropped. So we recommend avoiding strong shops, shocks such as dropping on hard surfaces. Avoid contact with abrasive materials. We use only high quality precious resin that generally is highly durable and scratch resistant. However, we recommend avoiding contact with extremely rough or abrasive materials to avoid any damage. Wow. And this is what the paper will look like as it comes rolled up in this paper. Beautiful pen. I, I am just totally without words. So let's talk about the pen. At the center of the pen we're looking at the gold plated band and it has an in inscription the word Benu, the name of the pen company. And this pen just sparkles. It just, the colors come to life. Beautiful blues, rich, beautiful deep golds. You've got some pinks, purples looking colors. Darker blues, turquoise looking colors. You got colors within colors. They're just overlapping and just beautiful, beautiful color combination. It's almost like you get when doing the ink drops where 
you get some ink out of the bottle uh, and then you use a syringe or a dropper and just drop drops of uh, ink on the paper and get that effect, that splatter effect. This is gorgeous. So, at the top of the pen or at the bottom of the pen, they're both the same. Beautiful pen. So let's get into the inside of the pen and see how she works. It unscrews. There it is. Let me look in the pen first, if I may. When I hold the light to it, it's kind of it's transparent. You can see inside, but you have would have to hold the light right up to it. I don't know if you can see it. Take my word for it, you can, but only if you put the light strong enough to it. But beautiful colors. And here is the pen. As you go down the barrel, the, the, uh, there'd be a step off right here where the cap screws on to the rest of the body. And nothing sharp. Feels very nice, so it just like there's nothing there. And then there's come on down to the grip, and that grip is just sparkling, beautiful blue. Wow, what a color! Knockout. And there's ample enough room for my fingers. I have small fingers, I have small hands. Now, if you have a large hand, will this work? Well, yeah, you can probably hold it right up in here. Well, let's see if it'll cap without ruining the pen. Now, if you could cap it and write with it. That would be perfect. I just put it on there kind of not just really tight, just kind of snug, like a little pressure. But I would rather not take chances with this pen. The price of this pen, $200. Now, that's not really a high price for what you heard on the description of the pen. You can't make these pens in 30 minutes or an hour. All in-house made. All German made nibs. Well made fountain pens. You can tell already this screams quality. Pride was put in this pen. Love, passion, everything goes in this pen because it represents Menu. And here it is right here. And for me, I honestly say it's an honor for me to be able to show all the viewers this beautiful pen. Now let's look at the nib closer. It is the nib from the writing on the nib, Schmidt Rhodium Point. And this is the fine. It has the F on there. And it has uh, some scripts, designs going on the nib. This is the fine nib. And let's turn it over. There's your feed. Let's open the inside up and see what we got. And it does come with a cartridge. Okay. So, 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put the cartridge in and ink it up so we can get ready for some writing here in a minute. goes right in there. So while that one is getting warmed up, I will lay it aside so we can do some numbers on it to see the measurements. But while we're at it, let's go ahead and do the next pin. And the certificate, again, of authenticity is right here. And, uh... I'll let the Mr. Announcer have the privilege and honor again, even though we heard it before, we'll do it again. This handmade and hand-painted fountain pen was produced in a limited quantity of 100 pieces worldwide. This certifies that the pen contained in this case is number three of 100 pieces produced. Again, special thanks to Kate and Alex. And uh, the sub Sublime Pin limited edition reference number is 015 GFB. So here's the, again, the certificate of authenticity right here. So that's something that you want to make sure you save it. Always in a safe place. So here's the other nib that uh, Kate sent me. And this nib is the medium, I believe. Yes, it is. I like the fact that it can screw on and screw off. That's going to be really great. So let's go ahead. As the other pin was, is the same setup. They'll all come just like this, as you're seeing now. I hope that you're all enjoying this video. I know I am. Uh, to have these pins from Russia. Oh, I want to drop that. Look at that pin. Look at this gorgeous pin. So let me let you look at this pin for a bit. And uh, these instructions are the same as the ones that was read before. So we don't need to go over that again. And uh, the detail. This is the gold one. Beautiful, rich gold throughout the pen. It's that blue black ground and the gold on top. What a finish. What a beautiful pen. Now I'll get them both together for you. Get my little stand here, wherever it may be. Here it is. you have them right there so we will give some measurements next all right the dimensions of the pen first of all this is the minima collection the length of the pen capped is 4.97 inches the widest point of the cap is 0 0.6 inches and the widest point of the barrel is 0 0.6 inches and that's for both. Uncapped 4.54 inches. The cap is 2.34 inches. If you post it, which I recommend you don't, but if you just have to, it's 5.98 inches. 
I just want to do some pin comparisons real quickly before I finish it up with the rod end example. Here is a Kaweco Sports pocket pin. So the Banu is a, a bit longer, has more girth to it, nice size to it. And here is the Otto fountain pin without being capped. And here is the Otto mechanical pencil. And the Banu is still a little bit longer. And here is the Estabrook. About same, yeah, they're about the same length. Just more girth into the Banu here pin. So, they're about same length right here. Interesting. And I could probably show you some more, but I think we got the general idea. So let's just move on to the writing. What everybody is waiting. So am I to see. So let's get on with the writing and we'll see what color it is. This is the fine nib. Look at this. Wow. All right, no, there's no skips, no hesitation, good ink flow, feels very well balanced in my hand, even without the uh, cap. Fine nib, and we'll do some fast writing. No problem keeping up. We'll do a few S's here. And we'll check out some line variation. No pressure. Pressure. You get some line variation. That's with pressure. That's without pressure. Let's check for some wetness. I'm using Rhodium line and it is wet. Let's try some upside down writing. And there you have it. It does write upside down, but not, you know, very well. But you can get a extra fine out of this if you like. Because that's what it looks like, right? Using a Pelican Blue ink. A fine nib. German mate. So what's your thought about this pen? Alright, now let's move on to the next one. The beautiful gold in blue. And let me recheck my nib. I sure believe this is the broad. It is. I'm anxious to see this baby in action. Here we go. First time I put the nib to paper and it writes. Look at that. Wow. Nice and smooth. That I did 
Not the pen, I picked it up too early. Yes, I think it's just a flowing, and we'll do the wetness. It's not really wet, but it's not dry. Beautiful pen. It does lay down the ink, keeps up with the flow. Line variation, no pressure, with pressure, not a lot. Upside down, not much. No. But for a fine, for a broad nib, real nice. All right, now, let me uh, get this other nib ready. So far, it's been about 35 minutes into the video. And uh, let me take uh, off the uh, Pelican cartridge. And I'll put it into the medium one. I'll be doing some cleaning, won't I? That's okay. And we'll let that go in for a while, so. Alright, give it a few seconds. and it, Yep, there it is. Alright. Let me try some... I'm going to use the other side of the Rhodia line paper, and this is the medium. Here we go. Very nice. Very nice. No problems, but no skips, no bad starts, flowing just fine, beautiful pen, writes really nice. Pen collectors out there, this will be one for your pen collection for sure. Straight from Russia, this beautiful resin, handmade, hand turned. Great looking fountain pen. Fast writing. No problem. Let's do some messes. No problem with that. And check for wetness. It's wet. I like that. Upside down. No. It's too scratchy. So I wouldn't advise it upside down. So there you have it. Uh, that's going to do it. Here you have uh, both pins. Screw on nib. I like that. Also, that's very handy. 
take one off, screw the other one on. The whole unit works together well. German made nibs, beautiful colors. I will send you a link to the site and be ready to be amazed because you're going to see colors that's going to just blow you away. At least they did me. I was very overwhelmed by these beautiful pens and just to have these pens here it just gorgeous pens. Now the question is $200 is again I'll bring that up. Some of you must say no not worth it. No nope. too much money but you know a, a vanishing point costs what 150 on up. Um, It just depends. You can find a lot of pens between the $150, $200, $225 range. It just depends on your taste. So it's up to you. You're the buyer. You're the collector. It's your hard-earned money. Would you like one of these pens in your collection? And if you don't like these colors, there's many more to choose from when you go to the site. And they have three different nip sizes. Fine, medium, and broad. All German made nips. So, I hope you found this uh, review as interesting as I have. And stay tuned for... The next pen that comes around, it'll be the one that will have the clip on the cap. It will be the one that will have the ink converter. That'll be cool, will it not? For the people that like to change inks a lot, like me. But what I would do with uh, these converters, uh, I would just fill it up with ink. I would get me my uh, syringe and get my favorite ink in there and go with it. Uh, Pelican Blue, it's okay. Blue, not my favorite. But I can assure you that I will try some different colors of ink in it because that's just me. Again, I will put the link down so you can go to their website. If you'd like to order, everything will be on the site. Uh, so, don't forget, leave me your comments below. Hit that thumbs up button if you uh, found this review interesting. And I hope you did because these are come from Russia. I, I was blown away totally on these really superb pens. My opinion, I like them. Other reviewers have their own opinions. These are mine. Thanks each and every one of you. God bless and each every one of you. Thank you for joining me on this length, lengthy video. Be safe and don't text and drive. I will talk to you later.